And welcome back. My name is John. I was trained as a pastor, and this is one of the ways I'm trying to do something creative with those skills. Something that doesn't quite normally fit the mold, but I guess you get the idea, right? So this one is called Apprentice, and I'm rather excited for this one because usually uh, these episodes tend to be a number of weeks or sometimes months in the workings. Like I go to a coffee shop and then I'll sit down with a journal and, and, and keep writing out notes. And then if an idea comes to me, I run to my bag and pull out my journal and write down a quick note, something like that. And mostly they take a while to come about, but this one, it came together rather quickly. So if you don't mind, let's get right into it. Okay. Uh, but first, I, I forgot to mention, I have been updating my own personal website. It's uh, thatjohnshafety.com. And I've put up there a few pages of my uh, episodes, my Patreon, and then also I've started making some YouTube videos. And they aren't flashy at all, but I think they're good quality content. And so if you enjoy that type of thing, I would be so appreciative if you just check it out. So let's get on with it. This one is called Apprentice. Now, an apprentice isn't quite something that we have in today's culture. Sure, we have students and you go to a lecture hall or you sit in on a classroom setting, but that that in and of itself is still different. You know what I mean? An apprentice was somebody that was learning one-on-one straight on from someone else, usually an artisan, somebody that was quite skilled at a specific craft. And so you would sit there or you would mimic or you would follow that individual all around their workshop. If they were a leather worker or iron worker or some other craft, you just shadowed them. And in that sense, you, yeah, you got to know how they did their thing. And so this one is called Apprentice. And it kind of comes about because I was reminded of a story. And it all goes back to this one time when I was up in Vermont. And there were a number of us that were just seated together at this local hostel. We were in Rutland, uh, Vermont. It was a great time. And there's probably about, I don't know, 15 of us all sitting there. And we are in the living room type area. And people started casually sharing some of their life stories. Well, inevitably, it came up that I have worked at churches in the past. And in front of everyone, it was really a profound kind of moment because it was a pin drop could be heard. And there was a guy that was across the room from me who in front of everyone said that he had the same exact degrees as me, but chose to leave Christianity and leave all of that completely. Which I respect his journey for that because he also put his work into it. He didn't just give it up lightly. He really fought for it. And so For him and his journey, he's trying to follow his own path with some amount of integrity. And that's always commendable. And in front of everyone, he asked me, why do you still consider yourself a Christian? Now, I understand that that term carries a lot of baggage with it, especially in today's context where It seems like Christianity has been hijacked for political reasons or reasons other than even just that. But the room got silent and as people all just waited in eager anticipation for what I said. And I can't even say that I said anything super articulate. In fact, I kind of remember looking down at my feet and looking around the room and A number of seconds passed, enough that it was almost about to get awkward how long I waited to give a response. And then 
the only thing that came to me was saying, because I just can't shake Jesus. Because he's like a really good wrestler and I can't quite pin him down. I can't quite figure him out. Everyone else, every other religious framework, everything else that I've heard makes sense to me and I can understand where they're coming from. But I just can't shake Jesus. He's like a monkey on my back that I just can't knock off. And perhaps you find that to be a crude answer or maybe an an irreverent one. But I don't care because it was a rather honest answer in that moment. But I can't, I can't even today, and that was a number of years ago, I just can't figure out a way to explain why I find Jesus to be so compelling. Everything that I seem to say immediately falls short as soon as I hear myself speak. As soon as the words exit my mouth, I'm like, ugh, let me reword that. And then you end up saying too much and there's just, I don't know. So what is it about Jesus that keeps me on my toes and keeps me coming back? Well, I think it comes down to two main questions. I think you can hear the the fan just turned on, huh? There's really kind of two questions that keep popping up for me every time I read the scriptures. And they're not the conventional questions. I feel as though there are some pockets of faith communities that like to ask the same questions over and over. And I rarely hear these two ones. So here they are. Number one. The stories of Jesus lead me to keep asking, what is ultimate reality? Meaning, is all of this headed to something or to someone? Is this going anywhere? Is there or is there not something to, something more to all of what we see, to all of what we feel, taste, hear, smell? And really, I mean... All of these questions about ultimate reality, it's really just other ways of asking the age-old question of what is God like? And so Jesus keeps me asking that question, like, well, what is ultimate reality? What's, what's the ground beneath everything from which everything grows out of, you know? If all of reality is, is like a plant that grows and blossoms and blooms, then what is the ground out of which everything grows? Does that make sense? So in that sense, what is ultimate reality is the first question. Or what is God really like? And then number two is what does, what does true humanity look like? Meaning... What are we here for? What are we actually here to do? What are we here to even be? Like, what what are we supposed to be in this life? And how can we tell if we're becoming more or less like what we should be? You see, those, those two questions, I very, I kind of rarely hear them come up. What is ultimate reality like? And then what is true humanity like? In Jesus circles, I tend to hear questions about like what is obedience and what is forgiveness. But even those, they, they don't scratch the itch for me. And maybe the same thing for you, but definitely for me. I want to ask a different set of questions. Does that make sense? There's a... A famous passage, oh, and a helicopter. Today's a busy day, huh? In 1 Kings, in the Hebrew Scriptures, there's a story. And I'm going to read just some of it for you and then reference a passage with Jesus in mind. 
So here we go. This is chapter 12. Rehoboam went to Shechem, for all Israel had gone there to make him king. Israel is getting a brand new king. When Jeroboam, son of Nebit, said, heard this, he was still in Egypt, where he had fled from King Solomon, and he returned from Egypt. So they sent for Jeroboam, and he and the whole assembly of Israel went to Rehoboam and said, so this, they're making a plea to the brand new king. Your father, Rehoboam's dad, put a heavy yoke on us. Now lighten the harsh labor and the heavy yoke he put on us and we will serve you. They're legitimately saying, hey, at the start of your new kingdom, take it easy on us. Your dad was pretty heavy. But Rehoboam answered, go away for three days and then come back to me. So the people went away. Then King Rehoboam consulted the elders who had served his father Solomon during his lifetime. How would you advise me to answer these people? He asked. They replied, if today you will be a servant to these people and serve them and give them a favorable answer, they will always be your servants. But Rehoboam rejected the advice the elders gave him and consulted the young men who had grown up with him and were serving him. And so he went to a different group of people, maybe to hear the answer he wanted. And he asked them, what is your advice? How should we answer these people who say to me, lighten the yoke your father put on us? The young men who had grown up with him replied, these people have said to you, your father put a heavy yoke on us, but make our yoke lighter. Now tell them, my little finger is thicker than my father's waist, meaning I'm a bigger, better man. My father laid on you a heavy yoke, and I will make it even heavier. My father scourged you with whips, and I will scourge you with scorpions. <laughs> That's terrible, right? So three days later, Jeroboam and all the people returned to Rehoboam as the king had said, come back to me in three days. And the king answered the people harshly, rejecting the advice given him by the elders and instead listened to the advice of the young men. He said, my father made your yoke heavy, but I will make it even heavier. My father scourged you with whips. I will scourge you with scorpions. So the king did not listen to the people, for his turn of events was from the Lord. To fulfill the word of the Lord had spoken to Jeroboam, son of Nebat, through Ahijah the Shilonite. <laughs> Those are some crazy words right there at the end, huh? Now, why did I bring this up? In the midst of telling you about how there's such a thing as an apprentice, after talking about how I had this moment where I said, I can't shake Jesus, and Jesus leads me to ask a different set of questions, well, this passage is connected to a New Testament passage in Matthew 11, where Jesus says, come to me, all to you that are weary and carrying heavy loads. Does that sound familiar? Is that familiar lingo? And I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Now, Jesus, at first read, you may find that to be incredibly poetic in Matthew chapter 11, which it is poetic. That's not, not true. However, it's referencing this old story from centuries before with the tyrant king who made everything heavier and he would whip people with scorpions at the ends of the whips. And here's Jesus affirming what a good king looks like. Because the people were asking for something lighter. And here Jesus is saying, I have a lighter, better, easier way. I think we pay lip service sometimes to the fact that Jesus was a rabbi. And rabbis were the religious teachers of the day. 
rabbis were known for uh, sharing wisdom about life and ethics and love and purpose and meaning and God and humility and service and just so much more. Um, but not only that, rabbis were also looking for people to fill their shoes when they're gone. When people who could teach their lessons yet also build upon them and trust them to stay true to the original lessons. I started off with talking about apprentice chatter, ch chat, because it's an important thing, I think for me, to try to spend my time wisely in that I think it really is a good idea to try to be an apprentice, a student, an understudy, somebody that shadows Jesus in some capacity, just just pay attention to the way that he replies to things, to the way that he does things. And I think I keep reading the Gospels because Jesus seems to keep surprising me and keep catching me off guard and keep challenging everything that I think Jesus should do. <laughs> And in fact, I think there is some truth to the idea that following Jesus is a lighter path. It's not a heavy path. And yeah, okay, there are some people in church circles that like to say that following Jesus is really difficult. But I, I kind of want to hold that in, in contradistinction, in in with like an asterisk at the end. Yeah, it, it is hard following Jesus, but you know what? It's even harder to not. Does that make sense? Because the rest of the world wants you to learn from it. The rest of the world wants you to hold on to grudges. The rest of the world wants you to make sure that you serve money rather than anything else. The rest of the world wants you to live in unforgiveness and to constantly seek power and retribution and performance and, uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Impressionability or the, the power of influence that is an even heavier life. And in fact, it's kind of like bringing back Rehoboam. That if you commit your whole life to trying to gain in power and in influence and affluence, and you're living on this never-ending treadmill of trying to impress other people, that's going to become like a tyrant king over you. Why on earth would any of us try to become apprentices and learn from that as the main way to go about our lives? Jesus asks people to follow him because his way is, in his own words, <laughs> his yoke is easy and his burden is light. Now, yoke means a lesson or teaching. Yeah, it might be hard to follow Jesus, but it will destroy you to live in unforgiveness and trying to impress everyone that you meet and all of those things. You see, there's, there's a really unique passage in, in the New Testament that has the rabbi Jesus tell people to go and make more apprentices of him. That he, he at some point trusts them. He's like, all right, I've taught you guys enough. Now you need to go and teach other people these same lessons. And in the Greek, which the New Testament was written in, uh, he tells them to go and make more apprentices, more understudies, more followers, more students um, from the the ethne, which in Greek, that's where we get the word ethnos or ethnicities, that 
you we are we're charged to make apprentices from every ethnicity in the world. You see this this Jesus tradition, this Jesus path is not meant just for western humanity. It's meant for the Middle East and the Far East and the Deep South and those up at the polar ice caps. This is not just for a certain group of people. And in fact, uh, this whole thing and why I find Jesus to be so compelling is because following Jesus really, it has little to do with building up an institution. And it has very little to do with getting people to help with the business of church. Because if you've ever been a part of a faith community, you know that there are some heavy conversations that people have and people have some really strong opinions about what color the carpet is. Well, the Jesus path and and learning from him about what God is like and what true humanity is like has very little to do with arguing over the color of the carpet or what kind of posters are we going to put on the wall? What what kind of light bulb should we use in these rooms? How are we going to make sure the lawn is mowed? Like, yeah, those are good things from a pragmatic understanding, but mm, this to be an apprentice and to learn from Jesus, it really doesn't matter about those things. In fact, it doesn't even mean grasping to try on try and make people into becoming a Baptist or Catholic or Presbyterian or Lutheran or Orthodox or just not a heretic according to you. This whole thing, and probably the reason why I find Jesus to be so compelling, is because this is about inviting people to take and learn from Jesus for themselves. Yeah, you can also have other people helping you in those conversations, but we invite people into this compelling set of scriptures because we honestly think the teachings of Jesus are easy and light compared to living lives dominated by power, prestige, vengeance, unforgiveness, money, and the endless task of looking perfect. We're all together. In fact, One of my favorite influences, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, he was a pastor during World War II who was killed by the Nazis for not (laughs) going along with their program. He himself was rather, uh, he was skeptical of formal systems of thought about Jesus. He, He thought that if we start talking too systematically about him, that he thought it would, it could lead people to not really learning from the person of Jesus. And that's a really striking thing because he spent his whole life writing about Jesus. But he thought, man, if we miss the point and forget how to also be students of Jesus in every part of our lives, then we've missed the point. So, yeah, it's been a windy road, but I think, I think I've kind of arrived at something rather profound. I think I'm here to help people become students and apprentices of Jesus. I mean, maybe, maybe perhaps that's, that's what this podcast was always about from the start back when I started back in 2016, it was always about finding creative ideas that helps people be better apprentices of Jesus to, to even help people to realize that Jesus has some more profound things to say than, than sometimes he's allowed to say, because sometimes faith communities are more wrapped up in the business of keeping the church building open than it is in sharing the teachings of Jesus. Oh, that's a heavy comment right there, huh? 
But I think I want to make one more statement is that I have found that some of my most profound conversations about Jesus tends to be um, with people on the fringes, not people who definitely are at the center of everything. I mean, those are good people as well, but I seem to have the most fascinating conversations about Jesus with people that aren't too attached to a church building or sometimes even people of other faiths. We've had marvelous conversations. And I think I want to say these episodes, even if you don't identify as a Christian, you can still learn from the person of Jesus. And in fact, go back and listen to more episodes or go open up the New Testament and read some of this for yourself because everyone has the ability to learn something from Jesus. And so why not just start? Yeah. No matter what ethnicity, no matter what your background is, open up a New Testament and try to read something from the life of Jesus. And then, and then maybe ask yourself, yes or no, does it, sound like it would be a really interesting ride (laughs) to be a student, to be an understudy, to follow, to learn what Jesus had to say and what he did. I don't know. Thank you for listening. I think, I think we're done for today, but, um, yeah, wherever you find yourself on your path, Let's be apprentices of Jesus together because I've been, I was raised in a church and I I went to grad school and seminary and I've been reading about him ever since through good times and bad times through the thick and thin. I just can't seem to shake Jesus. So let's, let's have some conversations about him together. Oh, and side note. Yes. I do know that the word apprentice goes by another word. And so if you're listening to this, shoot me an email or text or do something to let me know what that other word is that I have (laughs) deliberately not used so far. So yeah, there is another word for apprentice. So may grace and peace be with you every step of the way. May you open up the New Testament and maybe read Jesus in a fresh light with a brand new set of eyes that's maybe not held back. And may you learn what it means to take his yoke upon you for it's light and easy. And may you learn to incorporate freedom and forgiveness and confidence and self-acceptance and mercy. May you learn to add all of those things into your life because all of those things will make your life light and easy. So take and learn from Jesus. I know I said it before, but why not? May grace and peace be with you.